Hello and welcome back. So as you've seen, we've been talking a lot about input and output and, you know, items along those lines, but we haven't really talked about like, what is the current technology? Where's the future going? So I actually want to spend some time today and kind of look at, you know, what is the future? Where are we going? What research is currently being done? And even like what type of devices are actually out there that you know you could you can get that are kind of like more specialized um, input and output devices. So let's jump into the slides and start looking at some you know specialized input and output devices. So to start with, you know we have our augmented reality glasses, and you're probably familiar with them. Um, the first one in this list, the Google Glass, and then there's other ones as well, such as the the Recon Mod Live Alpine goggles. And each of these items we will look at as well um, in more detail. So keep that in mind. And we have the Brother Air Scouter. And as well, we have the Sony HMZ T1. So these are just four types of augmented reality glasses that are out there. So, you know, we'll spend some time looking at, um, you know, each one of these in a little more detail because they all are different. They all differ a little bit. Um, you know, and we start with the Google Glass because you probably heard about this one in the news and everything, you know, it's been available for a little bit of time now. And, you know, I personally, I've never seen one. I've never met someone that owns one. But, you know, from what I've read, they seem pretty cool. I don't know personally if I'd actually uh, wear them, if I'd want to wear them. Um, you know, being connected 24-7 is a little, I feel a little too much. But, you know, people are buying them. People use them. So, you know, it's kind of it's the future, and let's go and look at what these uh, what these involve. So our Google Glasses, um, you know, obviously they're made by Google, and what they do is, you know, basically it's an ability to provide, um, you know, information hands free. It can display this information for you. You don't need to use your hands, and you know, it's all displayed within the like the little lens of your the glasses. So it's pretty cool. Um, you know, these glasses actually provide you the ability to search the internet. Um, you know, you can also take pictures. So there is a little um, camera in it. And, you know, this was very controversial when they were first released. Um, and so next we have a little slide that um, has an image of them. So you can see what they look like here. So you can see that, you know, within the lens you have that little display that will show you information. And as well, um, you know, there's a camera in there. So, you know, these Google Glasses, they're pretty cool, you know, because it does provide you with the ability to search the internet um, and use them as well and get all this information real time. And as you saw, I said that they were controversial. One of the reasons they were controversial is that, you know, you could be in different locations and take pictures of people that might not want their pictures taken. Or, you know, you could meet someone and look up their information right away in real time. You could do a Google search of that person. Uh, you know, so they were just, people weren't um, very um, enthralled with the release of these because, you know, there was a lot of concerns about invasion of privacy and what this would mean to that as well. So, you know, Google Glass, they're pretty cool, but as I said, you know, controversial. And, you know, if they were used, if people used them appropriately, um, I don't think there would be much of a problem with being controversial. So now let's jump in and look at um, another type of glasses, which actually has a a totally different use than the Google Glass. So let's jump back into the slides and look at this. So this is your Recon Mod Live Alpine goggles. It's a very long name. Uh, and what these, it's actually used by skiers and snowboarders. So, you know, this provided them with um, ability for, you know, skiing and snowboarders. And it's cool because it actually would let you track friends. You know, you could actually play music with it. And it was even connected to your smartphone. So you could connect it using Bluetooth to your smartphone. And what this actually would do is display your GPS location, speed, the um, evaluation, the elevation you were at, and even the time of day. So, you know, this is all displayed for you in a nice little kind of like heads up display as part of your goggles, which we could see here in this slide. So you can see it's just, you know, you're going down the, the slopes and you can see your speed. You can see your GPS um, location. You can find friends. You know, you can even listen to music and control music through them. So, you know, it was a pretty cool um, feature. And I mean, you know, I used to, when I lived in the mainland, I actually used to be a, I used to snowboard quite often. And I think this would have been kind of cool to have to be able to track your speed, to know how fast you're going, to see where your friends were. You know, if you got split up, you know, you'd be able to track them, see where they were at. 
you know, and it would display information from your phone as well. So, you know, it was kind of cool to be able to, um, you know, see that as well and have that information available to you. And this is all just within the, your ski goggles. Just, you know, you'd put them on and you'd have all this information available, um, you know, for you. So now let's jump back in and look at another, um, you know, type of goggles that are available, which has another unique feature. So these are your brother air scouter. And what these did is, um, you know, this actually provides you the ability to overlay instructions. So, you know, you, it wouldn't block your entire vision, but it would be an overlay. And what this did was, um, you know, the user would actually be able to transmit audio and video using these goggles. And what they thought brother was manufacturing these for more like manufacturing applications. And so we could see what the goggles would look like here. And so you could see, you know, they actually had a little more, um, you know, weight to them because you had the, the pack and the goggles as well. But, you know, it provided you the ability to overlay the information. And as I said, they were gearing them towards manufacturing. So what you could do is you could actually have, like, the thing you were building off to the side. And then using the goggles, you could actually have the um, directions on how to build it you know, within your view. So you didn't actually have to like keep fuddling through the manual to see how to do something. You could just have it right there in your vision. So no matter where you were looking and moving your head, you know, you always had the instructions readily available. So I thought that was kind of cool, um, you know, and make things a little more efficient as well because you don't have to keep fuddling through and finding where you were and your steps, you know, it'd all be right there in your, in your vision. So now let's jump in and look at uh, another one as well. So this one is um, our Sony HMZ T1. And what this, you know, I thought this one was pretty cool because of it actually was able to mimic about a 750 inch screen. So if you think about it, you know, that's about a 62 and a half foot screen. That's a pretty big TV screen. I mean, I would like to have one of those in my house. Um, you know, and as well, these goggles um, would support 5.1 surround sound. So you would get surround sound using these goggles as well, though, Using them, it wasn't, you weren't able to be mobile, so you actually had to be plugged into your TV's HDMI input as well. So, you know, you couldn't really move around with it. It was more of like you're sitting at home watching a movie and you're stationary. Um, so, you know, the idea is basically, you know, as I said, sit back, relax, and enjoy a 62 and a half foot screen TV. Um, and you can see what the goggles look like here. So, you know, as you see, they have to plug into your HDMI input as well. Um, and the goggles basically, you know, they provide you with this like idea that it's a huge screen, but really you're just looking through these lenses and it's giving you the idea, you know, the view that you're in this huge theater, that you have this huge screen. Though, as you can see, one of the, you know, issues with these is you can't really share it with someone. You can't just be like, hey, everyone come over and watch my 62 and a half foot screen TV, right? You can only use one set of goggles per person. So you have to keep that in mind. You didn't really have the ability to share it with everyone. So let's kind of jump back in because, you know, military is always done, you know, always kind of does a lot of bleeding edge research as well. So let's look at some, you know, something that the military has been doing as well. So the military, as I mentioned, you know, they're always looking to use the most recent technology and even push the boundaries of what technology can do. And so the military has actually come up with this um, helmet electronics and display systems upgradable protection. It's quite a mouthful, so they actually abbreviate it and they actually call it heads up. So, you know, um, people actually say this mimics like the halo um, helmet. So you know, keep that in mind that, you know, people do say it mimics a halo helmet as well. And what this does, it actually includes um, see-through and projected heads-up display. So it, you know, it provides you with a lot of information and, you know, it can be used in tactical environments and everything. And one of the great features about this is they actually upgraded the communications of it. So you actually have better communications with your um, comrades when you're, you know, in, in battle. And as I said, it mimics the, um, you know, the halo helmet so you can actually see it here um, as well. So, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, advanced features and everything. They've uh, made it better. It's actually, uh, sub, you know, um, more bulletproof and everything. And there's better uh, technology and communication within it. So, you know, you're able to have that in the battlefield when you really need it. You know, so the military, you can see, is definitely trying to 
push the boundaries on what type of technology is available for um, to use within the battlefield when you know it really matters. So let's um, you know so that's kind of like the military. So let's look at some you know kind of a little more interesting and kind of a I would say out there type of input as well. So this next one I thought was kind of you know very uh, unique. I could you could say, and so this one it's actually um, you know interactive fingernails. So you know this is a little bit you know you're probably like hold on that's kind of crazy. But um, what this does it's it actually able it's able to display characters from you know touch screens as well. So you would hover your hand over the touch screen and your interactive fingernails would actually be able to display the character of the touch screen. So instead of blocking the character, you know, your fingernails would actually display it for you. So that's kind of cool. Um, and as well, using this, you would be able to do like mid-air gesture input. So you would be able to use your fingernails and do gesture motions and control your device as well. And as well, depending on the object that you're holding, you know, you might have different um, operations that you can use depending on the device that you're holding. So, you know, that's kind of research that's currently being done right now. And I thought that was kind of interesting and kind of cool. So, um, and another one that we have as well is uh, we call it, they call it skin put. And so what we're doing is, you know, we're actually making it available to have input on your arm, hand, and skin. And as I said, they're calling it skin put because you're using the skin as an input mechanism. And you can see here that, you know, the idea is to actually display um, images and text on the skin, you know, detect where um, a tap takes place as well, and you know, the tap would actually control devices. And here you can actually see an image of skin put. You know, so here's kind of a mock-up image that they're looking to use and everything. So, you know, skin put kind of interesting. I I try it out. I mean. Looks cool, um, you know, just imagine not having to, you know, pull out your phone to do anything that you could just do it on your forearm, you know, so it would provide us with a lot more um, capabilities as well uh, with that and more freedom, hands-free. So um, let's kind of look back into the slides and kind of wrap things up quickly. So as well, the future, where are things going? So kind of think like, you know, what might be next? You know, where will the future be? Um, you know, what about my biomedical implants for input and output? Um, you know, what about those? And, you know, will we all sit around wearing these heads up display to watch TV, you know, play video games and use computers? You know, we have the capabilities now, but, you know, is that where the future is going to be that we don't really have a TV that we all just wear these, you know, glasses and we all can watch the same thing so we can all have that 62 and a half foot TV. So, you know, hopefully you found this interesting and, you know, thanks and we'll see you next time.